Hello. Welcome back. I can't do that. No. You know. <laughs> hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I've turned myself into this cute little giraffe. It is really fun and easy. So I was doing this on a budget. I didn't want to go out and buy stuff. So I thought I'd just make do with what I have here at home already. I googled giraffe makeup. I found three images which I thought were pretty cool. So the photos was this first one and then there was this one as well so it was going down her body. I went down my neck with mine because I found a giraffe onesie. <laughs> and then there was this last one which I thought was really cool and I got the inspo for my hair <laughs> with that. So I thought that it was really cool so I want to do an animal because it's fun. If you're going to a party or something you can use it so it doesn't just have to be for Halloween. But because it's so big with the states and everything, I don't know, I just thought I'd jump on the bandwagon and have a little crack at being creative. I was thinking of doing some more Halloween tutorials as well, so if you did enjoy this one, let me know and I'll be happy to do something a bit more dark and mysterious next time instead of being like, oh happy! If you did want to see how I achieved this look right here, then please keep on watching. Alrighty, hello guys. Today I'm going to be doing something different with my face, so not the usual. Well, the usual plus a little extra. So, I was thinking, like, why not do a giraffe? <laughs> Starting off with my Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Pools Foundation in 310. I'm going to give it a shake and then add some of my Cover FX Custom Enhancer Drops in the sunlight. And <laughs> I added so much, it wasn't even funny, but it's all about the glow anyway, guys, isn't it? So I'm just going to dot that all over my face and once I've evenly dispersed that all over I'm then going to go in buffing motions so circular motions all over my face so it's nice and even and just has like a really nice coverage because I still want to be quite glamorous even though we are going to be an animal. <laughs> This is my second time using this foundation as well and the first time I used it I wasn't too sure about it but this time I actually really really loved it. I think it's because I used this buffing brush. Usually I use a beauty blender but I really like to finish with the brush that I used in this tutorial. So I reckon it's going to be more of my go-to foundation now because I literally love it that much. It is so nice, so silky yet such full coverage but it's very buildable so you can be very minimal or you can go as heavy as you want with it. It doesn't even go cakey. It's so gorgeous on the skin. Mixing the custom enhanced drops as well just gives this foundation a really nice glow and just makes your skin look so healthy, which is what I love. So I'm so happy with it and we're going to move on now. Going in with one of my favorite concealers at the moment. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and I got the color light. It is very light, but I wanted it more for highlighting so I really can bring out and whiten those features up. So... I'm just, again, buffing that into my skin with the same brush as I did with my foundation. So just all over, making sure it's nice and seamless, there's no harsh lines, there's no stark white lines or anything, just nice and flawless, because that's what we want, don't we guys? Nice and flawless face. <laughs> if you're looking for a very high coverage concealer, I would definitely recommend this one. I got mine off the Tarte website and it was very risky because I was like, okay, I don't know how light this is. Even with swatches and stuff, because it being on your skin, I don't know, it's just very different. But I just took a stab, got it, and I have loved it ever since the first use. So it's definitely, definitely worth the money, in my opinion. Going in with my LA Girl Pro Concealer in Dark Cocoa, just taking that around the frame of my forehead, down the side of my cheekbones, my nose, underneath my lip, and my chin and jawline as well. Taking that same buffing brush and going in circular motions all around my face. So the forehead, the cheekbones, the nose, the chin, under the lip, you know, the whole enchilada. So I really want to make sure with this look as well that I was making the most of the product that I had and dispersing it very evenly because I really wanted to make sure it was quite flawless and very, very even because sometimes with cream contours and cream concealers, it can get a little muddy and it can get a little messy I guess you could say. And saying that I'm going to pick up the same concealer as we used to highlight and I'm just drawing two little lines underneath my cheekbones just to clean up and neaten and just structure out my cheekbones just that little bit more and then just buffing in as per usual because that's what I do best. I love to buff. <laughs> going in with my favorite translucent powder at the moment. This is my Laura Mercier translucent loose powder and I'm taking my Real Techniques large powder brush. 
and I'm lightly dusting that all over the face, making sure I'm tapping off the excess because I want to make sure that you still have a bit of a glow from that foundation and concealer. Going in with my Kat Von D Shade and Light Face Palette, I'll be taking the banana shade to highlight under my eyes and also set that concealer so our eyes basically don't crease <laughs> you don't want them to crease because it's not pretty and it doesn't look nice so making sure that it's nice and flawless also placing it down the center of our face on our cupid's very chin and underneath our cheekbones just to add that light where we concealed and then i'm just going to go in with a fluffy brush and just evenly powder that all around so it's nice and seamless i'm now picking up my bronzing powder by mac it is in matte bronze I'm just lightly contouring around my face, so down the sides of my cheeks and my cheekbones. I'm also going to be going around the frame of my forehead and my jawline, just everywhere that would sort of add shadow, just so we can balance the highlight out, so we are looking a bit more dimensional now. Picking up my large powder brush again, and I'm just making sure I'm going over everywhere so it's nice and flawless and it's seamless. Picking up my customised Z palette, it's a mix of both Anastasia and Makeup Geek shadows. I'm going in with my Morphe M330 brush, which is my ultimate, ultimate, ultimate favourite blending brush. I just love the shape and just the fit that it goes into like my eyeball socket. It's so weird, but I just love it. And I'm using Orange Soda by Anastasia, and I'm just dusting that above my crease and then bringing it down making sure it is nice and flawless for the shadows that we are going to stack on top. Picking up my Sigma E45 brush, I'm dipping into Anastasia's Sienna, which is a nice reddish earth-toned brown, and I'm just deepening up the crease with that, making sure it is nice and seamless. And I'm just blending that in windshield wiper motions, just back and forth, just to evenly distribute that product. Now I'm going in with my Colourpop Super Shock Shadow, and this is in the shade Bandit. It is a... Ooh. <laughs> I don't know why I just oohed. It is a much deeper earth tone than Sienna. So I'm just placing that all over my lid because I find that with this look, I reckon it'll be more appropriate to do warmer tones on the eyes, but keeping it quite matte, and then doing something else a bit more glamorous elsewhere on the face. For example, lips. So just making sure I'm taking that all over the lid, so inner corner to outer corner as you would use a brush. And I'm just struggling with my finger, but I thought that I'd get the most colour payoff with that. Taking my ever so favoured Morphe M330 blending brush, and I'm just making sure that the shadows are nice and seamless and tied in really nice together, and there are no harsh lines anywhere. And my little baby mullet at the back is sticking up really weirdly and I don't know what is going on. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, just making sure I'm just going in circular motions, then back and forth, just to make sure it is nice and seamless. Now taking my Ico London Felt Tip Liner. <laughs> this lid actually was so hard to get off. <laughs> I'm just going to be winging out my liner, so really elongating my eyes, making it a bit more cat-like, and just give it a bit more shape. I find that with my eye shape as well, having wing liner really helps open and widen my eyes for some reason. I don't know, it just makes my eyes look a lot bigger than what they actually are, which I love. Taking my fluffy lashes by Coco, these are Queen Bees and Desi and Katie got me onto these. Well, I don't actually know them, but <laughs> from watching their snaps, they inspired me to get them and I absolutely love these lashes they are so wispy and long and fluffy and just oh make any look look amazing and everyone always compliments my lashes when i wear these too so oh, even better going in with my vero mascara by benefit i'm just coating my top lashes only just so they can blend in with the falsies so it looks quite natural and i'm just keeping the bottom lash line bare for now Taking my Mario Badescu Facial Spray with Aloe Herbs and Rose Water, I'm just spritzing that all over my face. Then going back in with my Super Shock Shadow by Colourpop called Bandit, and I'm just running that under my lower lash line just to smoke it out and add some more darkness and smokiness. And I'm just taking that from the outer corner to inner corner just so it can be nice and smoked out because I'll then be going in with a darker colour. This colour that I'm picking up next is Deep Plum by Anastasia. It is a deep plum basically, a very deep brownish purple. 
I love this colour in my crease. It looks so nice and I just love running along the bottom lash line too. Just to add that depth and smokiness without being too dark as like it can get if it's a black. I'm really making sure I'm blending that out so it's not too harsh and not too dark. Just enough so it just makes the eyes pop. Next up, I'm taking my Loose Pigment in Vegas Lights by Makeup Geek. It's my first time using it, so I have to be very careful when I open the lid. But it has this tiny little hole that you could just, like, take the pigment out of, which was very, very easy. Whereas other pigment pots, it's, like, a massive hole and it just goes everywhere. So this one is so easy to use. I just dampened my brush with my Mario Badescu spray. And then I just place the pigment in my inner corners just to add a little bit of colour. This is more of a fiery red copper colour as well, which I love. Picking up my Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Champagne Pop. Oh my god, Jacqueline Hill, you mastered this highlight. Seriously, it is amazing. I'm just, I swatched it obviously with my finger. <laughs> I'm just putting it down the centre of my nose, the tip of my nose, my cupid's bow. I thought, okay, I'm not going to waste it, so I'm just going to use my finger on the high point of my cheeks. And then I thought, hmm, why not go in with my brush? So, I then pick up my... Sigma F35 brush and I sprayed a lot of Mario on that just to dampen that and oh my god look at that <laughs> it's absolutely insane so I'm just going going and going just blending it out because that's what you got to do with this you just got to blend I always get so carried away when applying highlighter it's not even funny but anyway I'm just putting a little bit on my collarbones just to make them pop a little bit and just around like the little hollower, hollower? More hollow places of my neck. And I'm just making sure I'm blending that all over just so it isn't just highlight. Just making sure it's nice and seamless because that is what I do best, guys. Try to make it as seamless as possible, which is a lot of blending, by the way. Taking my Jeffree Star Liquid Lipstick in Dominatrix. No, no. It's not going on my lips, guys. This is the fun part. I'm going to be putting it on my face. So... I'm just going to be brushing some from the applicator onto a brush and I was very hesitant to first start off but I'll just fast forward through this bit for you guys so you can see the whole process. I'm just going to be making random shapes on my face basically so none are even whatsoever just doing any shape that I feel is necessary or comfortable in that sort of position like around my cheekbone area or if it's down in my jawline or my neck or my forehead sort of thing. So just really changing up the shapes just so it looks very diverse and just sort of different in a way because I didn't want it to be like squares and triangles. You know what I mean? I was a bit unsure as well as to where I wanted to put them. Like if I just wanted it on half of my face, like covering the whole thing or just around the perimeter of half of my face or all the way around both sides. So I sort of had to think about it a bit, but I just went with it, I suppose. And the end result I was very, very pleased with as well. So getting myself out of my comfort zone, I've never done anything like this. I was very, very scared and extremely hesitant to put liquid lipstick all over my neck and face, but it's a good thing we had makeup as a base anyway, so it was a little bit easier to get off, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> as a little side note as well, guys, I am very ticklish on my neck, so having the brush patting on my neck... <laughs> It was very uncomfortable. But anyway, I am using a patting motion as well when I am doing this, if you can't see. So I'm not dragging the brush on my skin. I'm patting it like you would a beauty blender, just so I can sort of get an even amount of product into that shape itself. So it's not streaky or anything like that because I just want it to be a bit different, I guess you could say. I'm now going to be going in with my MAC lipstick in Torp. It is a really, really fresh nude. It's like my lip color, but not. And I'm just applying that all over my lips and I'll then be going in with a gloss over top. And this is my MAC Lip Gloss in Modest just to go over the top of the lipstick because I wanted it to act more as a glue because I'm going to be placing the pigment on my lips and I've never tried that before ever so I'm hoping it works. <laughs> so the same pigment as I used in my inner corner, this is the Vegas Lights by Makeup Geek Pigment. And I'm just patting that on my lip. I was honestly very scared of doing this because I thought, oh my god, I'm going to have a ton of fallout. But the gloss actually helped act as a glue, which is what I thought would have happened. And I've actually never seen the tutorial on how people actually do this. So I thought, okay, let's take a stab as well. It's either going to work or it's not. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I'm so excited because now I'm wanting to play with glitters. That's obviously, obviously going to be a bit more messier, but... 
I'm hoping it'll work. <laughs> and before I forget, I'm going to coat my bottom lashes with mascara because I almost forgot and that would have been very bad. <laughs> but I remembered, so it's okay, guys. <laughs> so just making sure I'm coating them, making them nice and long and separated. I'm then going back into Bandit from Colourpop and I thought, okay, I want to do something a little bit different with these giraffe spots. So I thought I'd just hype another tone into them so it's a bit different. I don't know. I just thought I'd play around with it because I like the liquid lipstick, but I thought I just needed a little bit something more. So I'm just going around all of them and just patting some of that all over. I'm now taking a different Super Shock Shadow by Colourpop. Oh my gosh, that actually is a tongue twister. This is in Nillionaire. And I am going to be doing the same. This is a more glittery, more foiled sort of shadow. So it's going to add a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of glamour. Just a little bit something different. So I thought, okay. And also one of the three photos that I did see, one of the girls had glitter on her spot. So I thought that might be something cool to do. So... I then tried to implement that, but not as heavily, if that makes sense. Finishing up this look, I'm just going to highlight my brow bone using Champagne Pop and then setting my brows with my Anastasia Clear Brow Gel just to hold them in place while I'm in the jungle with the gusty winds. <laughs> and it won't be right to finish off this look with a little spritz of my Mari spray. <laughs> I just jumped off camera and did my hair. <laughs> And costume change. Here we go, guys. Boom. There we go, guys. <laughs> this is the completed look for my giraffe makeup tutorial, my Halloween tutorial, or whatever you want to call it. I had so much fun filming this. It was the best, and you guys get to see a little taste of my weird side. I mean, how can you not bust out a few moves while you're in a onesie? It just, you have to. It'll be rude not to. <laughs> I was listening to Chewbacca, by the way, and there we go. Right, three, two, one, step. <laughs> there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.